Hi, I just want to offer some advice on buying um, feet for your machine, your sewing machine. So you might be tempted, if you're doing, planning on doing quite a lot of piping, you might be tempted to buy, buy one or maybe multiple ones of these. And these are actual piping feet. Okay, so they've got a little groove in the, in the underneath, which means you can sit the piping cord into that groove. And then in theory, the needle comes down through that hole there. Um, my experience of them is that it never gets the piping tight enough within the fabric that you're encasing the piping cord into. Um, so I would recommend a more versatile foot to buy would be this, which is a one-sided foot. And what you can use that for is um, not just for piping, but you can also use it to sew zips on as well um, and anything that you need to get close up to. So how it works is that the piping cord sits on this side. You fold your fabric around the piping cord piping cord sits on this side and then you can machine right up against it the needle goes down through this hole here um, and it just sits very close to it you what you'll find because this is a standard um, the foot that you get on your machine so that's the standard foot obviously I'm using an industrial machine but this is the same same principle for a domestic machine as well so this is a standard foot which has got two sides and then the one-sided foot as you can see is one-sided I think also some people call it a zipper foot and you can get both sides so you can get the mirror image of this one as well however i find that this is the most useful one to use okay so i'm going to show you how to use that one now um, so you can see what it does in action so the first thing you need to do is remove the foot from your machine so raise it so raise the presser foot press the foot up and then unscrew it um, you might find with a domestic that it clips on but with industrials you'll find that they need to be unscrewed and it will drop down once it's it's free and then you can remove it. You don't need to take the screw out completely, just enough to allow it to, and I would advise not taking the screw out completely, um, just leave it enough room that it can come out. And then you replace that with the one-sided foot and you tighten the screw back up and make sure that you tighten it up so it's nice and tight, okay? So then once you've done that, you've got your needle threaded and then you're good to go. So then you take your piping cord so the width I'm using is number one width and I'm using um, a piece of wool to actually encase my piping in. Um, I will talk again at another point about um, how you cut by strips and things. The anomaly in everything, yeah, there's always an anomaly. There's, you can't always say, I can't always say anomaly, um, anomaly, um, but you can't say this is the only way you do something when you come to sewing. It, it's never as, as straightforward as that. So usually when you make piping cord or piping, which has got piping cord inside it, um, usually you would cut your fabric piece on the bias. When you use wool, you cut it on the straight. Okay, you can cut it on the bias, but generally you cut it on the straight. Um, it just, it's got enough flexibility in it, basically. So this is a melt and wool. Um, and you just wiggle it in, so to make sure that your piping is as close to the fold as possible. And then you line it up, and you, just, you don't want to sew on the piping cord. What you want to do is sew up, right up next to it, okay? You can pin this, but if you've watched any of my classes so far, I'm not, not, I'm not versed to pinning things, but I don't always pin things. So, I'm going to start myself off there. And then, you're sewing as close to that piping cord as possible. Can you see it's just lumped up because it's nice and close to the piping cord, okay? Let me bring you out a little bit further and just see that I'm, what I'm doing is I'm holding this nice and taut. And also, I'm ever so slightly going to angle it so that my needle is going to hit the, the edge of the piping cord. Okay, so can you see I'm not going straight down like that. I'm just bringing it over ever so slightly so that that pushes against the piping cord. And then by doing that, I end up with nice tight piping. Okay, and then you can sandwich that between two pieces of fabric. And that's how you get your piped edge. Okay, and obviously once you've um, finished sewing, finished doing your piping, um, you can change your foot back. When you sew this onto another garment, you need to use the side one-sided foot again. Okay. And um, what you don't want to do is squash that piping. And if you try and do that with a two, you know, with a normal foot, standard foot, so that would sit over like that, it would just squash your piping. Okay. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. Bye bye. Just a quick add-on. Um, as I said earlier, there's always an anomaly. Um, I said that when you sew piping onto your fabric you would always use the piping foot. So for example, here I attached the piping to this piece of fabric and I used, not sorry, not the piping foot, the one-sided foot, okay? Um, Cause I didn't want to squash the piping. However, once I did that, I then realized that I'd, there was the anomaly. There is always that 
other thing that happens. So when you are laying um, a piece of fabric over the top of another piece of fabric like I am here, so I'm not joining two pieces together, I'm laying it over the top of this. This is a cuff piece and this is a sleeve. Um, you would use your normal two-sided foot, okay? You can do it with the one-sided, but I generally use it do use the two-sided foot, the standard foot, um, because it means that the fabric doesn't move around so much. So what you do, um, so in this case, because I've got this point, what I've done on the inside is I've trimmed away the top fabric, the black, and I've trimmed away one layer of the wool, but I've left one layer of the, um, sorry, one layer of the white wool, and then I've left one layer of the white wool so that it's long, um, so there's something still there. And then just because I've got a little curve here, I've just put some, some cuts into that just to allow it to, to lay flat. And then I'm going to lay it onto my sleeve. So this is for a 95th rifle uniform, Mr. Man's uniform jacket, and one occasion where I do want to pin something. Okay. And then what happens, we're going to stitch in the ditch. Okay. So that means that I'm going to stitch here. Okay. I'm not stitching on the piping cord. I'm not stitching on the black fabric. I'm stitching on the stitch line that I originally sewed the um, black fabric to the white fabric, basically. So stitching in that ditch that has been created. Um, and it takes a bit of skill. And it's one of those things that you just got to take your time doing so that you make sure that you are getting right into that. I'm using the colour thread that I use for the um, piping, so the white. Okay. And as you can see, because I've got both sides of the foot, the foot is staying nice and even over the, um, the, the fabric. Okay, that's all I wanted to show you. I um, hope you've learnt something. Um, I hope you've enjoyed. Happy sewing. Bye.